we watched the cartel documentary film last night, which kind of gave an overview of where a lot of the dysfunction is in public education. A lot of it has to do with the monopoly system, where there's no choice, there's no competition, and a lot of jobs are protected. It's kind of degenerated into a jobs program for, for much of the, uh, America and a lot of school districts and uh, to the detriment of kids. What I did this morning was wanted to update people on where the news was lately in terms of school choice initiatives, both voucher and private tax credit scholarship uh, programs across the country, uh, charter school, the new charter school credo study that just came out of Stanford which showed that children of color of low income had the equivalent of 36 extra days math instruction every year they were in a charter that learning equivalent compared to if they were in a regular district school. Uh, we wanted to talk about a lot of the corruption stories, that every month dozens of new stories tend to emerge where people steal money and worse, actual crimes uh, that are violent crimes get committed uh, by people who are in the education system. And so the, the idea was just sort of introduce people to the news flow that choice media covers, which is you know, we feel that education is the least covered subject in the American media. And that's, the, and that's why we created the organization Choice Media to kind of bring together and aggregate a lot of these stories, opinion pieces also. And I wanted to just update everyone here on, how, on all the news that's been happening lately. It's critical that, the, that people, more people get involved in the education reform movement. There's momentum now, but it's such an early stage. We have about 4 to 5 percent of kids in charter schools across the country, about 2 percent in private school choice voucher type or tax credit type programs across the country. So uh, some states ahead of others, of course, but the reason any of that progress has happened is because of involvement by actual people on the ground. And still, by you know, anywhere you go in any state, there's still at least 80, 85 percent of the kids that do not have any options. So you know, school choice isn't just about a failing public school, and there are plenty of those. There are thousands and thousands of those. It's also just about a better school for a certain kind of kid, because all kids aren't the same. And wouldn't anyone want different kinds of schools the way you want different kinds of breakfast options or different kinds of coffee or different kinds of automobiles? Uh, so why wouldn't every community want schools for dramatic arts that specialize in those things or science and math focused schools or vocational focused schools or schools that specialize in computer science in particular, for example, or something like a, a sports focused schools that maybe keeps kids from dropping out? There, there would be all kinds of, you, you can imagine for all, all kinds of particular pedagogies and principles that could create different kinds of schools that would attract and keep different kinds of kids. So that's what the choice is about. The grassroots efforts is so important. Groups like public school options are so important because without people on the ground at actual school board meetings who actually talking to state legisl legislators, all that's left is the existing uh, establishment bureaucracy the millions of dollars of union money that goes as campaign contributions to public officials to keep things the way they are, to stifle reforms, to stop choice. The only, I mean, that's set up, that's established, that's real money every year that goes into those coffers. So this is all we have to fight that, is individual people lining up and making their voice heard. And that's why you guys are so important. If you show up to a school board meeting for the first time, and I'd never done this till I got into this movement, uh, you'd be surprised how few parents show up to these meetings. You'd also be surprised if you bring a couple of neighbors with you and you get up to speak, how much attention you'll get from the board because you've just made your presence known. And maybe you, maybe you observe the first couple meetings and then you get up to speak because you have something you want to talk about. But yes, individual people can really adjust, can really have a huge impact and, and course corrections on, on these local school boards where most of the decisions are made, most of the money is spent. Uh, and so I would urge everybody who's a taxpayer, whether you have kids in the system or not, go to a school board meeting um, because it's, it's the future of the country. It's where most of the local money goes. Uh, and so it's just something that's been too long ignored. And, and so your, your groups are, 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 I would think, a great way to help motivate people to say, look, I don't have to go alone. I can go with someone else. I can be part of a group. I can, we can have a, a, a sort of a strength in numbers here. And I would urge everybody to, to do that.